Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport, and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Hello and welcome to the show. This week we're telling you a story about Percy Fringe, who was born in Tulsk in County Roscommon in 1854 and is laid to rest at St Luke's Church in Formby near Liverpool. He was a songwriter, a poet, a painter and of course his songs are known throughout the world. Recently Jerry Malumbe organised a special memorial on his 102nd anniversary at St Luke's Church in Formby. And Sarah Mangan, the Consul General for Ireland and the North of England, laid a wreath at his graveside. Oh Mary, this London's a wonderful sight And the people here working by day and by night They don't sow potatoes nor barley nor wheat but there's gangs of them digging for gold in the streets. At least when I asked them, that's what I was told. So I took a hand at this digging for gold. But for all that I found there, I might as well be where the mountains of Mohorn sweep down to the sea. You remember young Peter O'Loughlin, of course. He's over here at the head of the force. I met him one day, I was crossing the strand, and he stopped the whole traffic with a wave of his hand. And as we were talking of days that are gone, the whole population of London looked on. But for all his great power, he's wishful, like me, to be back where the dark morns sweep down to the sea. Thank you. I'm delighted to be celebrating this all-rounder. You know, his watercolours are priceless. His songs travel the world. Don McLean sang the Mounts of Morn. Um, and he has this great knack of being funny, he can bring in pathos in his emigrant songs, jovial songs, songs that make you tap your feet, that have lasted the test of time. Here are we, 102 years later, after his death, celebrating his longevity. I mean, this, this is a copy of a painting by Percy French, which was donated by the Percy French Society, who, who, who come here regularly and, um, to visit his grave. There's a lovely bronze figure of um, Percy French in Bally James Duff in County Cavan. Yeah, well, there is Martin, and there's, there's statues and plaques of him all over Ireland and the world. 
there's lots of Percy French restaurants and they have the um, um, his painting or um, a bust of him in, in the foyer. Um, and there's a great monument up in Newcastle, looking over the mountains of Mourne. And any part of Cavan or Roscommon, Bally James Duff, they'll all make reference to Percy French. I know we, we had lunch in a hotel in Strokestown, Percy French Hotel, very busy. Lots of memorabilia in the foyer all about him. They're very proud of him in, in Ireland. Welcome to St Luke's Church, uh, where we gather here today uh, for a rather belated 100th celebration for Percy French, 102 years. A few of us met up, um, I think it was a week or two ago, to plan um, this afternoon's programme. And we were reminded of a few lines by Percy French. He says this, Remember me is all I ask, and yet, if the remembrance prove a task, forget. So it's very tempting to take this as Percy's permission just to head to the pub instead. <laughs> it was a great delight to have so many people here um, outside at St Luke's to celebrate and to remember Percy French. Um, unfortunately we couldn't have his centenary two years ago with the pandemic but it was lovely to have a belated celebration um, 102 years to the day since he died here in Formby. I um, had already accepted the job to, um, to become vicar here and I'd had a meeting uh, with a few of the parish representatives and they just mentioned in passing that he was buried in the graveyard so I got a great surprise. I guess like a lot of people I'd thought he'd been buried somewhere in Ireland but in fact here he is in Formby in England uh, which I suppose is quite fitting with so many folk um, that can relate to him. And of course there was a fitting tribute to him today to see Sarah Mangan here, Consul General for Ireland and the North of England, to lay that wreath. Yeah, it brings it all full circle. I mean, we could have waited until later on in the year when the weather was better. But I felt, in organising this event, that we had to some way acknowledge his centenary. We couldn't do it in 2020 because of COVID, but it's on the centenary of his death. And we can have other concerts here, maybe come back and do another concert in the summertime. Um, but it was, I felt it was fitting not to let his centenary go without acknowledging it. It's lovely to be here today, here in Formby, to commemorate the 102nd anniversary of the death of Percy French. So. Uh, a little bit delayed, but uh, everything has been delayed, I suppose, because of the pandemic. So it was a real honour to be here today to recognise this very important Irishman, very proud Irishman, um, who wrote such beautiful songs um, about Ireland and about uh, Irish people, both beautiful and clever and witty and funny. He may talk of Columbus sailing across the Atlantic Sea, but he never tried to go railing from Ennis as far as Kilkee. You run for the train in the morning, the excursion train starts about eight. You're there when the clock gives a warning, and therefore an hour you will wait. And as you're sitting in the train, you'll hear the guard make this refrain. <whistles> Are you right there, Michael? Are you right? Do you think we'll be there before the night? Oh, you've been so long in starting, you couldn't say for certain, and you might now, Michael, so you might. <coughs> Pure Percy French. Give my dad any chance now, and he'll, he'll be up singing a Percy French song. Um, so yeah, as I was growing up, uh, we'd hear dad singing those songs a lot, so they were all very familiar to me, the Mountains of Mourn, but particularly the funny ones, like uh, the West Clare Railway or, and uh, Phil the Fluter's Bowl, because there is, my dad has a personal connection to Phil the Fluter's Bowl. Uh, apparently, Percy French was um, inspired to write that song because of a real Phil the Fluter, uh, whose, whose story he was told by a friend of his who was a uh, vicar in the village of Carrigallon in County Leitrim and my father was born and raised in Carrigallon, County Leitrim. So they would have known of Phil the Fluter and some of the characters that appear in the song uh, would have been known to my grandmother as well, including the Miss Brady's in their private horse and cart. He was visiting and staying with his cousin, um, who was a vicar in an, another church here in Formby, uh, a childhood friend of his, Canon uh, Richardson, and he came to visit him and um, he had been doing a concert up in uh, Glasgow and came down by train. And at, at the age of 66, it's hard to believe, but at that time, health was, people died younger. And um, he got pneumonia and, and died here. And um, he's buried in the same churchyard as his cousin, um, Canon Richardson, here for, in Formby. 
not, not far from Liverpool, and near there's a seafront not far from here, and the Irish Sea is looking out in front of you. It's a long time back since the world lost Percy French, and we weren't here. We've heard of him, but you can't see him. You can't get him on YouTube, but we know we had somebody there who was special. And if you want to learn about your community, and you want to go back and try to understand what life was like, I'm thinking of maybe my grandparents right at the beginning of the 20th century. What was at the heart of, of their life? I'll tell you what a lot of people needed was the musical and the songs. It didn't have to be together, but the songs that you mentioned are so important. The songs that Reverend Matt mentioned, they're so important. And they kept people going. No telly, no radio, no YouTube. Just that's where you got your entertainment from. Tell me a little bit about the significance of the blue plaque. Well, blue plaques, of course, are well known across the whole country, but what uh, we wanted to do in Formby was put some into the community just to remind people of our heritage and people who've lived here. And there's, there's choices. As it happens, this is, the, uh, this is the third one, but Percy French is the most famous name. Well, Beryl Brainbridge might have disagreed with that, but, uh, but Percy French is a famous name. And it's just, when you come to live in Formby, I've been here about 20 years now. When you come here, it's one of the first things that people will tell you, oh, if you go to St. Luke's, which is a lovely place, a lovely site, a lovely church, but Percy French is buried there, and that's, that's, that's important. Then fill the filter, tip the wing to little crooked path. I think it's nearly time to see for path and build a hat. So it took us a while because it was right through the pandemic we were trying to do this. You have to raise the money to do it. It's not the cheapest of things for a, for a, a charity like ourselves, but the parish council came through on this one. So what we agreed was if the civic society did the homework and, and agreed wording with, it, with uh, people from the parish council, they'd find the money and then we'd put it in an appropriate place. Um, the parish council then discussed it with the people who lived at the house. They were very, very happy for it, agreed where it should go, and then it was a case of just getting the thing made. We thank you now for Percy French and for the many gifts you gave him. We thank you for the joy and delight and laughter that he has brought to so many of us here, even more than a century after his death. As we honour his memory, make us more aware that you are the one from whom comes every perfect gift, including the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's great, yes, to see there's so many folk know about him um, in Formby, the Civic Society. Um, there's lots of folk who know about him through that. Um, and on a sunny summer's day, you quite often hear Irish accents in the graveyard of people walking through trying to find out where it is that Percy French is buried. So it's lovely to be able to point them in the right direction and, and show them where his grave is. Percy French done so much to promote Irish songs and history and we'll be hearing a lot more about them in part two. See you in a minute. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lala Vita is an award-winning independently run Italian restaurant located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family owned funeral service, first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. 
contact us on 0161 432-0809. Welcome back. This week we're telling you a story about Percy Fringe, who was born in Tulskin, County Roscommon in 1854 and is laid to rest at St Luke's Church in Formby near Liverpool. Now we're going to continue on with his story. A little poem by Percy French about a lady, a young woman who can't decide what to do with her life. I'm simply surrounded by lovers since Dad made his fortune in land. They're coming in droves like the plovers to ask for me hand. There's policemen, teachers, vicars. Ma said you'll get used to the creatures, but ach, I don't know. The convent is in a commotion of me thinking of taking a spouse. And they were wondering I didn't have a notion of taking the vows. It's a beautiful life and it keeps you from going down below. As a girl, I thought I might try it, but, ach, I don't know. I've none but myself to look after, and though marriage, it fills me with fears. I think I'd have less of the laughter and more of the tears. I'd not be a slave like my mother, with six of us all in a row. One little baby's a bother, but ach, oh, I don't know. Now there's a fella, he's taking me fancy. Now I know he's a bit of a limb, and though marriage is terribly chancy, I'll chance it with him. He's coming tonight. Ooh. I tingle from the top of my head to my toes. I tell him I'd rather stay single, but ach, oh, I don't know. <laughs> ach, I don't know was a nice, funny poem. Um, Little Bridget Flynn is about unrequited love. Um, his songs were written to entertain, and whether he made you sad, because he, he really got into the, um, the mind of emigrants, like, dear Danny, I'm taking a pen in my hand. You know, he, he knew how to tell the story of the emigrant experience, but he also told, wrote songs and poems that entertained, and that's how we all became fans of his, because we, we could all do a Percy French song or a parody and um, he stood the test of time. When Percy French fell ill in Glasgow, it was here he came. I don't know how he got here. I'm only guessing it's got to be the train. But he got here and lasted five days or so before he died in the house which now carries on the wall. A beautiful house. It's got the blue plaque for, for Percy French on there. We waited months before we put it up because of the pandemic. It's right by the railway line in the most beautiful house, which is called Greenlee. John Brook Richardson was his cousin, but a very close cousin. You could say he was a friend as much as a cousin. And Percy French had family in Formby as well. He had John Brook Richardson's mother lived here and, and his brother and his sister. Where she go? Oh, I don't know. But I love to have her sit on my knee and I sing like a thrush on a hawthorn bush if she just have an eye for me he was an engineer by trade originally the, the, the banjo took pride of place before any engineering thank you very much he was a journalist he edited the Jarvie the Irish Punch he was a great lyricist it took him some while before he got married, but I will mention the fact that he did marry twice. That sad story of um, marrying in 1892 and losing his wife after one year, a one year and a day after the wedding, she died in childbirth and the, the baby girl three days later. Her name was Ethel, Etty, always called Etty. 1894, he married again. He married Helen. They had three children. I think it's absolutely fascinating. It, it's, it's a personal touch here. His first child to his second wife was the name of his first wife, Etty, who lived then and right into the, into the middle 90s. And a sister, the two of them lived right on till the, till the 1990s. Like, it's an amazing story. He also described brilliantly the bewilderment of the emigrant, finding himself in a new strange land where there's gangs of them digging for gold in the streets. 
And Percy French also recognised and no doubt witnessed the loneliness that emigration creates for the families left behind, beautifully expressed in an Irish mother. And the old man's heart rejoices when I read they're doing fine, but it's oh to hear their voices and to feel their hands in mine. So many of his songs speak of emigration and of the missing home, as well as the, as the wit. I mean, I think his humour persists anyway, but also the pathos, uh, as the emigrant story uh, still resounds for so many of us today. So it was really lovely to see so many people. I think it shows that his songs are still of relevance and still touch people's hearts. We had lots of people here from Liverpool today. And of course, on his grave, there's a second plinth um, donated by the Liverpool Irish Centre in 1970, the 50th anniversary of his death. And it's, it's, it's a mountain of mourn granite, which they sourced, and the Liverpool Irish Centre donated it. And it's all written on the pla plinth. So it's a great kind of connection to the, the Irish here in this great, as they call it, the most Irish of English cities, Liverpool. The Percy French Society, which is based in County Down, and um, Barry O'Neill, who was the great kind of current chairman of that organisation, hoped to, have, to be here today but couldn't travel. And they're delighted that we, the Irish in Britain, are recognising our own Percy French. And uh, we hope to maybe join up with the Percy French Society and do something again here in Formby, where he's buried. The Mountains of Mourn is a combination between the lyrics by Percy French and the music by um, Houston Collinson. Houston Collinson was a great um, partner with Percy. He was a priest, he was a, an organist and a composer, performer in his own right. Um, but it's fair to mention that he, the, the, the melody of um, the Mounts of Morn is also very similar to an old Irish air called Carrick Doon. And, and Thomas Moore used it uh, in um, Bendemere Stream. Bendemere Stream. So it's an old Irish um, tune, but the combination of Percy French and Houston Collinson gave it longevity. Uh, Don McLean's made it famous for it, and it, it survives today because of, of what they did together. I'm um, from County Antrim myself, um, Lisburn, so not too far from where the mountains of Moorns sweep down to the sea. I've spent many a happy day climbing up the Moorns and um, playing in the sea down by Newcastle as well. It's very fitting that you're uh, here at this moment in time to celebrate his anniversary as well. Yes, it's a great honour um, to be able to celebrate uh, with everyone. So many folk um, back at home know of him and love his songs and his um, humour and his poetry. So it's, it's great to be able to be part of that today. The fact that we are gathered here today to remember Percy French over a hundred years after his death, the fact that so many people are still familiar with his songs, and that they can still be heard sung at concerts, in pubs and at family gatherings, is evidence that these are more than just witty ditties. His songs tell of an Ireland of times past, now long disappeared, and yet they are also timeless and familiar. The characters he conjures up, chancers and dreamers, parents and lovers, often unrequited, and proud men and women full of their own self-importance can still be recognised today. We probably all have heard of a Percy French song or recognised a character and goes, oh, yeah, I know who's who he's talking about there. All that remains for me to say is happy Percy French Day. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Oh, Jerry, before we let you go, are you going to shave off that tash? No, we're staying on, Martin. <laughs> A big thank you to Jerry Malumbe for arranging a very special memorial. Now we're going to leave you with one of Percy French's songs, The Mountains of Morn. Here's Daniel O'Donnell. See you all next week. Sure I met him today I was crossing the strand And he stopped the whole street with one wave of his hand And there we stood talking Of days that are gone While the whole population Of London looked on But for all his great power He's wishful like me 
to be back where the dark moors sweep down to the sea. There's beautiful girls here, but I never mind with beautiful shapes. Nature never designed, and lovely complexions, all roses and cream, but oh, Lachlan. With regard to the same, that if at those roses you ventured to sip, the colors might all come away on your lips. So I'll wait for the wild rose that's waiting. For me, where the mountains of morn sweep down to the sea.